What's going on summoners? LMC here with a special video that some of you are going to like and be excited for and some of you are probably going to hate me for this video. But this is a sneak peek at uh, the guild battle in Summoner's War. Let's read through it and try to understand it together before we discuss what this means for a free-to-play community. So, on the right here, this is a forum that was recently published by Come To Us, and this is the sneak peek that they're giving us. And some of it's broken English, some of it's uh, not t typed out the way I think they really mean it, but uh, we'll work through it. Okay, so pre-guild battle registration. Guild Wars will start on Sunday from 00, 00 till 2400, and the guild leader or vice leader is able to register for the war. You must select a league consisting of 10 or 20 guild member at the time of registration. So right off the bat, that's interesting to me because there's 30 guild, there's 30 members of a guild, but we have to select which league we want to be in, whether that be a 10-person league or a 20-person league. Uh, I just want to say that I want to shoot for a 20 guild member league because I think we'll do very well in it, especially if we, uh, with all the, with having Twitch, with having... Uh, team speak with having the free to play Facebook page. Uh, I think we're going to be able to have 20 guild members that are active, strong, and able to do this. And I think the competition is going to be less in a 20 guild member team than a 10 because most guilds can rely on 10 people being on at the same time. Whereas uh, not very many can rely on 20 being on. But that's what we want to shoot for. And I think the rewards will probably be greater in a 20 in the 20 person league as well. Not sure on that, but that's what we're going for. Enough about that. Start of the guild battle. Guild battles will be weekly from Monday to Saturday. During these six days, you will be able to battle three times. At the start of the guild battle, the guild leader or vice leader can initiate the battle once and press start. Both guilds will battle for one hour simultaneously and the automatic matching will be decided by guild points. So think of guild points like arena points now. That's how the matching is going to be decided. For the guild points, it will be, well, that's what they say, winning will score you points, while losing will bring your guild score down, similar to the arena. If you tie with an opposing guild, and you still have time remaining, then you'll be matched with a different guild instead. In the duration of an hour, you will have a limit of attacking five guilds. In after one hour, if you are battling your fourth guild battle, you'll be able to complete the battle even after the one hour time limit, and the points will be calculated accordingly. But if it is your fifth guild battle, the battle will end once the one hour duration is up. So basically it's a rush during that hour to get as many guild points as possible, and you can battle as many as five guilds during that one hour. So it is going to be a rush. Hopefully we can uh, snowball through five guilds and just destroy them and uh, be done within an hour. You know, that's the goal, I guess. But it's going to take an immense amount of cooperation between guild members. Okay, so at the beginning of the guild battle, each guild member will be able to choose which guild to attack. I think this is supposed to mean which player to attack, which building. So over here, I think you're going to get pick one of these players. Each member has three chances to attack and it will cost five energy to attack. So you need to save up at least 15 energy for each of these battles. Sounds like to me. For each guild member on the defense battle, a loss will subtract, I think they mean, 30% of remaining hit points of your guild building. So if you lose, you lose 30% of the hit points of your guild building. A win on the defense will reward your guild 5% of the max hit points, so you'll gain 5% in the guild building is the way I understand it. The overall score will be calculated by everyone's hit points. If you get multiple losses, this will drastically bring down your average hit points, which I believe is up here. So this is the total guild hit points up here. So multiple losses will drastically bring down the average hit point. If the amount of hit points lost in the guild is greater than 10% of the max hit points, 
then only 10% of the hit points will be deducted. Uh, so I'm confused on that. That um, if the amount of hit points lost in the guild battle is greater than 10% of the max hit points. So if they don't take you down, if they don't win and get 30%, and only 10% will be deducted. Uh, it's a little bit confusing how they word it. I don't think it's really important to us right now. If you attack higher hit point opponents, you can inflict more damage. Also, a guild can only be attacked once, so you may need to collaborate with your guild mates. Collaboration is going to be very important if... Also, a guild can only be attacked once. So I think that means a guild building... So at the very start, you pick who you're going to attack, and only one person can attack them. But they can attack them three times, is my understanding. Again, I could be very wrong on a lot of this stuff. but So if you attack higher hit point opponents, so how, how do they determine who the high hit point opponents are? Are those the players who are level 40? Are all level 40 players have the same amount of total building hit points? Or is it determined on how many six-star monsters a player has? Or is it de determined on how long they've been playing? I mean, who knows what this could be. Or maybe it's determined by the monsters on their defense, how many actual hit points those monsters have. Not sure on that. But basically the way I read this is if you attack stronger players and beat them, then you do more damage to the total guild hit points. So... Attacking their, not going for the weakest all the time, is a good strategy. Send your strongest members after their strongest members if you're confident they can win. So, that's pretty important, but you know it kind of makes sense. I think it's a way for them to balance out um, and not have as much emphasis on being super strong in the game to participate in these guild battles. Okay, so if a guild battle lasts over 20 minutes, the guild leader or vice leader is able to forfeit. So why would you forfeit after 20 minutes? Well, because you're looking to get as many points in a one-hour time frame as you can. So let's just give up here, guys, and let's move on to the next guild, and hopefully we can beat them and get some points. We have a chance to fight up to five guilds in one hour. So that's why you might forfeit. Okay, so for the guild battle combat phase... The battle will be a 3 vs 3 match matchup and will consist of two rounds. So that's this picture down here. You will need six monsters chosen from the first round will be matched up with your opponent's first round. This applies with the second round as well. Leader skills will be unique to each round setup, so chosen choose wisely what leader skill you want to bring into battle. I think all that means is that in round 1 here for example, the Water Monkey King is the leader, so his leader skill applies to this round. And the Water Brownie Magician is the leader here, so his leader skill applies to the second round. I think that's all that means. Could be wrong. Alright. Like the ruling in Trial of Ascension, you will be restricted to bring, bringing identical monsters. So you can't bring two Fire Rock Shasas, for example. That's the way I understand that. If a monster dies during a guild battle, you will not be able to reuse that monster. I don't, I'm not totally sure what that means, but for example, if I'm attacking this guy right here, let's say this is, his name is Lord Mukau 2, I attack him the first time, so I can attack him up to three times, they said. Each time I attack him, it takes five energy. So the first time, let's say he wins, but I kill one of his monsters. Then the second time I attack him, let's say I totally beat him, so that would take down 30% of his hit points, and and then I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't have to fight his monsters again. I, I'm not totally sure how this goes. Maybe after you win, his monsters all revive. So if you fight him the first time, you lose, but you kill a monster. You fight him the second time, now he only has two monsters. You win, so then you take down his hit points 30%. And then you fight him the third time, and then he's going to have his monsters again. Maybe that's how it works. Who knows? I'm just theorizing on this. 
Your guess is as good as mine. All right, placing defense in the arena. This is where it gets pretty iffy here. For defense in the guild battle, you can set up your team during the preparation or even in battle. Three monsters for round one and round two. Monsters placed in the defense cannot be used. Does that mean that if you put them in your defense team, you can't use them to to attack the other guild members? This, this leads me to believe that you need 12 monsters. You need six to put on defense, and you need six on offense. That is a lot of monsters for a guild battle. There's a lot of teams, a lot of players out there who do not have 12 good, well-ruined monsters. So think about that for the next couple of weeks. Try to get yourself 12 monsters that synergize nicely, at least a few of them, you know, groups of three. So if these three synergize nicely, they'll make a nice team. Pick another three that'll synergize nicely. Try to get 12 that you think two two teams for defense and two for offense. I think that's going to help a lot in this. Maybe I could be wrong here. Maybe you only need six total. Maybe you can use the same ones. I don't know. But the way I read this is you're going to need 12 to maximize your usefulness in this guild battles. So that's pretty intimidating right there. I think it is at least. I'm just now working on getting my six six star monster and I have a lot of five star monsters but I need to make sure I have them the monsters that work nicely on a team together okay so for rewards <clears throat> they're pretty vague on this if you achieve a victory you'll be rewarded guild points and guild experience and like the arena you'll be able to get higher points when you fight stronger guilds so if you're a silver star, maybe you only get three guild points for a win. If you're a gold star and your guild rank is higher, maybe you get four points for a win. And I'm sure at the end of the week, they're going to give out guild rewards just like an arena. So that's basically it. This is what they describe in the forum. And it describes a very similar thing here. It says a few different things. Um, but basically the same thing. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it, and that's my understanding of it. What does that mean for the free-to-play community and what we're doing right now? This is where I'm going to get a lot of negativity from the community because the whole reason I started this community and everything we're doing, which consists of YouTube videos, and if you guys have noticed, I haven't been putting out a lot of YouTube videos because I've been making sure that every one I put out, I want it to be useful and worth your time watching it. I don't want to be posting a video a day where it's just me playing the game and you guys get nothing out of it. I want this to really be helpful stuff to improve your game. So we got YouTube. And by the way, I'm going to be coming out with a farming video very shortly where I've done a lot of statistics and done a lot of uh, recording of my battles in farming and which ones are going to be the best, and for mana stones, energy, everything all together. So look forward to that. That should help you guys out in getting those six-star monsters. I've been really doing my best to get a lot of six-star monsters lately. So we got that. We got the Facebook group where there's so many helpful people giving rune advice, team advice, whatever you guys are looking for, posting all the new updates, writing posts on freetoplaygaming.com, members like... Predator, Me Tank, Bastion, County Zero. Uh, people you guys have, everybody's learned their names because they've been around and dedicated so much time to the Twitch channel, to posting everywhere and helping people out. Those are the people who I want to make sure we do right by this guild system. And to do that, we're going to need high level players. So this is the part that's going to make a lot of people sort of upset because a lot everybody wants to be in a good guild and wants to be in I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to be in the free to play gaming guild. Right now there's a wait list of like 70 members and I hate to do this but I can't manage through that list. It, it's already 2 months old and every time I ask somebody and try to follow up with somebody if they want to be in that if when it's their time to come to this guild, they've already either quit the game or not playing anymore 
And fr frankly, to make this work, we need high level accounts because the members here, I don't want them to move on because they put in so much time and effort into this game. They're constantly playing, constantly giving other people advice. I have to do right by them to retain the talent that's already here. And to do that, we need to be a high level guild. Now, with that said, the requirements for the free to play guild, F2P space guild, are six six star monsters and your account being level 40. Right now we have some places available. We have four openings. So if you meet those requirements, post in the comments for this video or on Facebook. I'll hopefully be able to see it on Facebook. Apply to the guild and I'll check your account out and we'll get you in. Now, with that said, there's other free-to-play gaming community guilds out there. One of them's been created by Rafi, Riafi, I know. And uh, he's taken a lot of members from Channel 5001, incorporated them into the guild. I don't know the specifics of it, but there's other guilds as well who people who have recruited members from the Facebook page. So I want there to be multiple free-to-play gaming community guilds. And I want to have alliances with those guilds. I want to share resources and share the TeamSpeak channel and hopefully the guild member who starts these these sub guilds will be able to coordinate things and do Twitch and and uh, really have these really special hours where things are going on. And maybe some members from the F2P guild will be able to help out our sub guilds. I don't know exactly what the future holds for this thing, but our guild, I want us to be a top tier, top ranked guild. There's so many members who deserve it right now who are already defeating some of the highest level players. They're at the top of the arena charts right now, and I know they're going to want to push. I want to push to be at the top of the Guild Wars. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to take a lot of coordination. It's going to take a lot of dedication from members. Members are going to have to be on at the same time. So if you can attend my Twitch broadcast around 7 p.m., you're going to have to be dedicated to a certain time frame at least three times a week from the sounds of this thing. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to take a break. You, we can only take 10 or 20 members, depending on what league we sign up for. But it's going to be important that you are available, and it's going to be important that you're pretty high level as well. So I want us to do good, and this is the way we're going to do this. So I'm sorry for anybody who's upset about what's going on here, but get into another guild. There's going to be multiple sub-guilds joining up. So post on Facebook if you're interested in starting a sub-guild and you think you'll make a good guild member and you want to utilize the resources for the free-to-play community that we have available. Any ideas that you guys have, I'm more than ears to hear them. But for the time being, those are the requirements. Six six-star monsters, as well as a level 40 account. And hopefully we'll be able to broadcast some of this stuff on Twitch. Possibly some really exciting stuff on YouTube videos. You know, that's what I want to do. And I don't know where this is going to head. I've already said that before. But uh, look forward to it. Look forward to following this guild and being a member of a sub-guild at least. Something like that. And maybe those sub-guilds are going to need to be a different time frame. Maybe you don't fit into the free-to-play guild even though you meet the requirements because, well, you're in a different time zone. So there's a lot to think about here, and I frankly am not going to have time to manage all the stuff that needs to be managed here. I want to get good, useful, helpful videos out to you guys, and I want to help people on Facebook, and I want to do the Twitch streams. I love doing the Twitch streams, so... There's only so much time available in my schedule, so I'm going to be relying on the community members as well. You guys have not steered me wrong in the past. You've, you've done me right, and I appreciate everything you guys have done, and hopefully we'll do right by these Guild Wars, and you guys won't have any hard feelings. So with all that said, thank you all for all the support. Uh, lots of great things to come. Look forward to new and exciting videos that are going to help your Summoner's War game. Uh, LMC, signing out for now.